Welcome back to Build It Motorsport. Um, so today we're continuing our three-part series on things people don't always understand in racing. Um, our first video was about power to weight ratio. Uh, basically in that video we covered what uh, the major differences are uh, with power and, and weight and how weight can really slow you down and hold you back when racing. So the lighter you have your vehicle, the better off you're gonna be for acceleration um, and how it takes a lot more power uh, for more weight to make it go the same speed as something that might be lighter. Uh, so if you guys wanna go back and watch that video, that's a really simple concept, but I wanted to cover it because of a recent experience I had had uh, when racing somebody who just didn't understand um, how big of a difference some weight makes. Um, so if you guys wanna go back and watch that video, I'm gonna leave a link in the corner you can go click on that, um, but it's pretty simple stuff there. So, now if you guys are still here, uh, the second video in this three-part series is going to be about gear ratios, uh, gearing and gear ratios. Uh, and then the last video is going to be about DA, density altitude, that's the quality of the air. But uh, for now, gear ratios. So I'm going to get right into it. This may be a longer video because it's a little bit more technical on some things to understand these concepts. Um, so things that are going to be gears uh, is going to be obviously your transmission there's several gears in there and the purpose of the transmission is to shift as you are accelerating as you get to higher speeds it's going to shift and it, the point of that is to keep your engine in the power band that it can operate in it's to keep it at peak power that way you're applying peak power down through the gears so typically the more gears you have the better and your transmission uh, then the next thing that we're going to cover uh, that's also gears is your rear differential gearing or you're just your differential gearing some of you are going full drive racing so uh, just differential gearing um, so that's gonna affect your top speed in a gear that's gonna affect a lot of different things there uh, and then the last thing that is also tire or the <laughs> tire size is also a gear uh, if you think about tire size Tire size changes the, the gearing to the ground. So if you think of tire size as the tire is one gear and the earth and the, the road is another gear surface and there it's running on that, the bigger your tire is, then that's gonna have more of a disadvantage on acceleration, but it'll allow you to have a higher top speed, uh, theoretically a higher top speed than some other people might be able to have with a smaller tire. So it's, that's very dependent. But all those things considered, uh, those things are gearing. We're gonna get into some things uh, that are very specific. So now that you kind of know what's going on with that, that's the basics, that's the entry of what different things are gearing in your on your, on your vehicle. Uh, we're gonna get into the concept of gearing and describe it, and this is really the part people don't quite understand, is exactly what gear ratios are and what how they affect you. Um, so. I'm gonna put this up on the screen. So this right here is a, just an example of two gears um, that are running on each other. And uh, this is not really a accurate representation of anything that is exactly in your vehicle. It's kind of represents sort of a manual gearing and a manual transmission, but, uh, but it serves uh, example just the same gearing just the same it's it's a good example for us so just bear with me on on this example so this is a good representation so the green gear has exactly 28 teeth and the red gear has 14 teeth so also the green gear is twice of the circumference so twice of the distance around as the red gear is so the red gear is half the size of the green gear. Now, if you're looking at this as it goes around, uh, the so what's gonna happen here is you're gonna have either, you're gonna have one input and one output, or one drive gear, which is the same as an input gear, and one driven gear, which is the same as an output gear. So input is drive gear, and output is driven gear. So, uh, let's for, for this example we're gonna start with if the green gear is your input gear or your drive gear and the red gear is your output gear or the driven gear uh, then since the green gear is twice of the size twice of the teeth 
as the red gear, then as the green gear goes around one full revolution, it goes around one full spin, then the red gear is going to have gone around two full turns. So every one turn of the green gear, the red gear will turn two turns. So what happens here is that because the green gear has to go more distance than the red gear, the green gear will be turning half of the speed of the red gear. So for every one turn of the red gear, or um, excuse me, for every one turn of the green gear, the red gear is going to turn twice. So the red gear is turning twice as fast, twice as much speed. So that is called an overdrive gear ratio. So that would be considered a one to two gear ratio, or as commonly referred to, a 0.5 to one gear ratio. 0.5 to one, remember that. That means that the input, which is the first number, is gonna turn 0.5 times, or half of a turn, for every one turn of the output. So the second number is always the output gear, the first number is always the input gear. So when someone says that they have a 0.5 to 1 or a 0.5 overdrive, that means it's a 0.5 to 1. So it means for every one revolution of or the input gear, the output gear is going to turn twice. So twice as fast. That's an overdrive. Now, I'm going to put another example up here really quickly of what a direct drive would be. So there it is, that's direct drive. Basically that means the input and the output are gonna be spinning the exact same speed. There's no uh, gearing multiplication going on, no gearing division going on. They're directly the same size. So the input and the output speeds and the input and output forces are gonna be the same. Now let's go back to our other example. So now, instead of the green being the input and the red being the output, We'll reverse those. The red is now the drive gear or the input gear, and the green gear is the driven gear or the output gear. So because of this, reversing this, this would be an underdrive gear, meaning that the output gear is going to spin slower than the input gear. So if you look at it, the red gear is going to spin one full turn, but the green gear is only going to have sp spun a half of a turn. Now this is called mechanical advantage. This means that uh, effectively you're multiplying the force of the smaller gear by half or by by two, excuse me. You're, you're doubling the actual force that is applied. So because you are spinning the smaller gear with your engine, we'll say, and it is turning the larger gear half as fast, you're losing speed. It's slowing the speed down, but the force, the energy, doesn't just disappear from the speed. Energy cannot just disappear. These things can't just disappear. They, uh, it's the law of conservation of energy. So what happens is that energy is instead of being the same speed now it's slower so the energy is focused into less of a less rotations less rpm same amount of energy is there but it is focused into a smaller window of time so what happens is now you have a two to one gear ratio meaning for every two revolutions of your input gear which is our red gear in this example the green gear is going to turn one full revolution. That's a two to one gear. That's your underdrive gears. That's the gears you're going to use when you're accelerating from the, off the line. So uh, the lower that first number, the more low geared it is. That's what that means. Uh, actually, excuse me, the higher the first number, the higher the first number is, then the lower the gear ratio is. So people say that's a low gear. That's like a, a low gear. That means that gear has a bigger first number 
and then the second number is usually a one it should always be a one so uh, if you have a rear end gear I think we're done with that example if you have a rear end gear then it's gonna be like say a 410 to 1 a 410 to 1 gear ratio is a low gear ratio uh, for most passenger vehicles for most uh, street vehicles that are intended for the street um, 410 to 1 is a pretty low gear 410 to 1 is a lower gear ratio than a we'll say 373 gear ratio that's a 373 to 1 so someone has 373's the other person has 410's the 410's is giving a better mechanical advantage it's a lower gear but a higher number that's to remember so a higher gear is going to have a lower first number a lower number and you're always comparing that number to one so it'll be like 410 to 1, 373 to 1, uh, there's 392 to 1. There's all different kinds of gears, but that's just something to keep in mind, guys. That I hope I explained that well. I hope I did a good job uh, illustrating what a gear ratio is, um, how to identify it just when someone's talking to you about them, and, uh, and things like that. But the lower the gear is, the more mechanical advantage is going to be. The more it's going to multiply the force that is going backwards. So your transmission is going to modify the force that is being applied backwards. It's always a trade-off. You have speed and force, inversely proportional. Meaning, if your speed is cut in half, then the force that is being applied backwards is going to be doubled. Now there's some there's mechanical losses associated with friction and stuff like that. But we're just talking about the the actual science of it, and we're not going to get into that stuff. But so the the less mechanical event. So let's say it spins twice as fast as the input gear, then it's cutting your force in half because it's stretching it out. It's stretching the force out and making it spin faster. So these things to keep in mind, guys. But uh, to wrap this up, to bring it all into reality, I think, uh, hopefully I described that in a way that's really good and understandable. If you don't understand it, uh, it is kind of a complex concept, especially the way that, that gears are named and labeled. Uh, but if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I will definitely answer them. Um, that's my biggest thing here on YouTube is, is uh, I want to help you guys understand things. Um, uh, and go through things. I've been to school for all of these things. I, I've, I've been a technician, a Chrysler technician for six years out of my life. Uh, I don't do that anymore, but uh, this is what I love. I'm a Mopar guy. I love them, uh, but it applies to all vehicles. Gearing applies to all vehicles. So if you guys have any questions, please put them down in the comments. Now to bring this all in, to wrap it up into something rea in reality, if to use our example from the last video uh, about power to weight ratio, that kid, he, he had a eight speed transmission. I have a five speed transmission. Um, the five speed transmission is not gonna have as tight of gears as uh, the eight speed does. Eight speed is gonna have more gears, meaning that they're, instead of going from a low gear ratio to a really high gear ratio to an even higher gear ratio those gear ratios are going to be closer together if that makes any sense so whenever you shift you're not dropping the the engine speed as much uh you're so you're able to stay in that window of power better you can stay at peak power better and more consistently and that's really the advantage of having better transmission as far as more gears and then you can also get a transmission that may not have more gears but the gears are are more evenly spaced they're tighter ratios um, I'm not gonna get into all the different ratios that, that Dodge has uh, on the trucks but there there are basically three different transmissions that you can get uh, one of them is the the 45 RFE which is the same as a uh, it's the same gear ratios as the 545 RFE and the 65 RFE. Uh, those translate through all of the year models up until the 8-speed transmission. Then on the HD trucks, there was a 66 RFE. That transmission is made to go behind a Hemi, but it will it has the same gear ratios as the transmission that's behind the diesel. Um, so uh, the Cummins. So those gear ratios are way better 
than the 545 RFE than the 65 RFE. Those, those, the transmission that's in this truck, the 545 RFE, the gear ratios on these things are absolute trash. I can race somebody in first gear and it's not bad, but whenever we get to second gear and it shifts, there's like, it's just, you can tell that you're down on power a little bit until you get back up in that power band. That's why with an eight speed, you don't have that problem. It just sits there and just stays right in the little 1500 wind, uh, RPM window of where your peak power is at. And it just sits there and your gauge is just gonna boop, boop, boop. It's, it's awesome. But I'm not going with an eight speed. Um, I know I, in a couple videos ago, I talked about uh, a guy that I really, uh, I really like, a YouTuber that really inspires me. Um, it's Hot Down Racing Team. I don't know very many of you guys watching, you probably already know who that is, but uh, he's going with an 8-speed, so good deal, man. I'm looking forward to seeing that, but uh, me personally, for this heavy, heavy truck, I want to go with the 66 RFE. It's made to basically be a lot beefier than the uh, the 545 RFE is. It's got better first gear ratio, a tighter second gear ratio. It's, it's a true 6-speed with evenly spaced gears. That's what I'm going to go with. But for right now, guys, we're, we're working on HP tuners. I got a new laptop to do that on, um, and I got the tuner coming in. I'm gonna work on getting the ProLink so I can data log the Y-band, uh, but uh, that's not happening this week. That's keeping you guys updated as things go along with the channel and with the Battle Wagon. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please, please put them in the comments and I will get back to you. I promise I'll get back to you. And uh, other than that, uh, keep on building it, you guys. Work hard. Do what you want to do. Um, hey, if people might doubt you. Uh, you might not have the fastest vehicle in the world. You might have a big old heavy truck like me or something that no one expects to be fast. But I just want to encourage you guys to keep building it no matter what it is and uh, work hard. So thank you guys for watching Build It Motorsport. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.